Okay, I'm going over cost minimization, and this matches the chapter from Halvarian's book on cost minimization. So we're going to start out by minimizing by choosing x1 and x2, where x1 and x2 are inputs such as workers, and um, I'm going to do pizza ovens because I'm going to make this an example of a pizza shop. Um, so ovens. So some kind of capital, and capital can be computers, it can be robots, it can be lots of different things. And what we're minimizing is actually going to look a little bit like a budget constraint. So watch this. Um, so we have the input price of good one. Uh, well, so price of, of workers is of course their wage times the quantity of input one, which is number of workers, so wage of workers times number of worker hours, basically, plus uh, the price of input two, so the price of a oven, times the quantity of ovens that you're going to buy and employ. So this looks exactly like one side of a budget constraint because it is, it's price times quantity plus price times quantity, and this is going to be the total amount that the company or the firm spends. And it's going to be subject to <coughs> um, a production function. So total output, F is the way Halvarian represents output. So um, we, we know that this also equals Y, and output is actually also a quantity, so it's helpful to keep that in mind. So total output um, as a function of our two inputs, and that equals something. So um, we're going to let that equal Y, some fixed amount of output, and of course this is exogenous. Um, the, the prices of these inputs are exogenous. Um, our only endogenous variable besides the choice variables, the input, is our output in terms of production. So the, the way to think about this is the firm is contractually obligated to provide a certain amount of services. Um, for example, the firm has to provide um, a thousand pizzas per day to the school district. They've signed a contract that they're going to do that. So how do they minimize the cost of providing those pizzas? given that they're obligated to produce a certain output of pizzas. Um, now this function, we've seen this one before, it can be seen from two different angles. So um, we can look at it from the x1, x2 angle, and this is like looking at product mountain from the top, so it's going to be, um, it's going to look a little bit like in difference curves, except instead of these being utility, and, and this being a picture of a contour map of utility mountain, it's a contour map of product mountain, where along one of these curves, product or output stays the same. So this would be uh, 500 pizzas all along this line, any given combination of workers and uh, ovens will produce 500 pizzas and y equals 1,000 pizzas along this line, this particular indifference curve. And we know that we're contractually obligated to produce 1,000 pizzas, so let's bold this particular um, isoquint curve. That, that's what that's called, it's an isoquint curve, because that's what we're obligated to do. Now, we could look at Product Mountain over here, um, just from the side to remind ourselves there's diminishing marginal product um, over good x1 and it would actually look the same over good x2. So we've seen this before, it's the same shape as the utility function, diminishing at the margin. Alright, so to minimize cost, we might want to think about placing this budget constraint like thing, this thing we're trying to minimize, onto this map and I'm going to erase what I've done to make it a little bit cleaner. Okay, so I've drawn a much cleaner, more beautiful isoquint curve, and I've only drawn the one isoquint curve that's relevant. So we know that we need to provide a thousand pizzas, that's contractually obligated for our firm to do, so there's only one isoquint curve that we're going to end up on. And But there's lots of different ways of combining workers and ovens to do this. Um, as represented around this line, and we're imagining this is a three-dimensional object. If you were walking around Product Mountain, um, kind of like this, you would be staying flat along that mountain because it has the same 
number of pizzas in, when pizzas is are the elevation of the mountain. Pizza, it's pizza mountain. Okay. Um, now we're imagining this line is going to be the loan that this company takes out from the bank. So companies have to generally borrow money before they can um, pay their workers and make their pizzas and then actually they get revenue down the road after they've already created that. So they're going to have to borrow money for all of their expenses. We're at least imagining this now to make thinking about this problem easier. So um, <clears throat> how much do they borrow from the bank? And they have a number of different options to do this. They could borrow 10000 from the bank. Um, that would be one possibility. They could borrow uh, 15000 from the bank. $15,000 loan. That would be another possibility. Um, or they could borrow 20000 from the bank. And actually, they can borrow any amount from the bank. They could borrow 18000 They could borrow... Um, $15,043, they could borrow any amount they want from the bank. But we're just going to draw three of them because it would be really tedious to draw more of these. So let's start with the $1,000 loan scenario. They're going to think, okay, if we borrow a ten, sorry, $10,000 from the bank, um, what does that look like on this curve? Well, one option would be to pay the workers um, to only hire workers, hire zero ovens and only workers. In which case, with $10,000, um, they could hire 10,000 divided by the $10 um, per hour wage they pay their workers, and that gives, they could hire 1,000 workers um, for that $10,000 amount. So this is 1,000 workers. and zero ovens. That, that's what that point represents. Or they could not hire any workers and only, um, only buy ovens with the $10,000. And ovens cost $100, so in which case they could buy 100 ovens. Um, <clears throat> 100 ovens. So that would be if they spent their entire $10,000 on the 100 ovens. Or they can buy any combination in between those. And we know that the combinations in between those are going to give us a linear budget constraint like thing. This is basically exactly a budget constraint if our budget was $10,000. Um, so here are all of the possible combinations of workers and ovens on this budget constraint um, if they take out a $10,000 loan. Well, you can see the problem here. It'd be nice to take out a $10,000 loan, but if they do, they will in no way be able to make the 1,000 pizzas that they're obligated contractually to provide. In which case, um, they need to take out more money. So they might say, well, what if we took out a $20,000 loan? In which case, this is like a budget constraint that's equal to $20,000. And so we know that this budget constraint with $20,000, which is essentially replacing the M uh, function in our budget constraints from earlier in the textbook, um, we know that the slope of this budget constraint-like thing is going to stay the same because the relative prices have not changed. We're, we have the same wage for workers, same price for an oven. Slope's not going to change, but of course we have more money. It's like increasing the amount of money M in your budget constraint, so it's going to um, be farther out. So we might have something like this. And those should be parallel. So this line out here is if we take out a $20,000 loan. This line up down here um, is if we took out a $10,000 loan. Um, so if we take out a $20,000 loan, can we produce the 1,000 pizzas we're obligated to produce? And the answer is yes. We, there's actually two places on this isoquant curve, and these are, by the way, isocost lines are the name of those. I will label those at the end of this. Um, but right now you're really thinking of this as a budget constraint. Um, darn it, I didn't quite draw that parallel, but even if it's not perfectly parallel, know in your head it's really parallel. Um, so just don't forget that. Um, so we could produce um, at this amount or this amount, both of those points would 
get us 1,000 pizzas. But as a matter of fact, we could actually produce more than 1,000 pizzas if we have a $20,000 loan. Um, so this, this up here is on a higher isoquint curve. So we get to produce more, more than that, but we only need to produce a thousand because that's all the people ordered from us. And so really we'd like to take out as small of a loan as we possibly can while still creating the 1,000 pizzas. And to do that, we're going to choose the isocost line, all three of these are parallel, that's tangent to that isoquint curve with the 10,000, uh, the, the 1,000 pizzas. So this is the $15,000 loan, and it turns out that's the cheapest we can produce the 1,000 pizzas for. We need a $15,000 loan to produce those pizzas, otherwise we'll not be able to meet our obligations, but it's the, it's the one cheapest point where we can do that. So basically we want to choose the loan that's the smallest amount of money, um, that's acting like M, that will achieve the 1,000 pizzas. And so let me label these curves just so that you have the vocabulary on the map. Got a pen? Okay, so we have our isocost lines, which are linear, they act like budget constraints, but there's an infinite number of them on this map because we could take out an infinite number of loans. And there's only one isoquint line on this map because we're contractually obligated to provide 1,000 pizzas. And the pizza example would be one example, but there's lots of companies that sign contracts to provide certain amounts of things. You might imagine um, a wedding caterer. Like three months before the wedding, they sign a contract to provide 500 cupcakes for the wedding, and they're going to minimize their costs to achieve that contract that they've already signed. Um, a building company signs a contract saying they'll build this building and it's going to be of a certain quality. And after they've signed that contract, they're going to do that for the cheapest price possible because they want to take out the smallest loan from the bank that they possibly can without violating their contract. So that's cost minimization, that's how it's used, and that's how it relates to other things that this textbook has covered. And just quickly to, to go over this equation, we've got inputs, workers, and capital. We've got the prices of those where this thing acts like a budget constraint. Um, the budget constraint can have different values for M, which are our loan amounts, and we can play with that on the map. And then subject to our obligation through our contract, we're obligated to provide, and this is a production function, a fixed amount of a particular um, output. That's cost minimization.